Good morning, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to uh, come to this session. I know it's the last year of the conference. Hopefully, you guys had an amazing uh, conference. So today, uh, we would talk about how do customers really accelerate their API-first strategy and leverage enterprise and apps and the data which is uh, logged in there? How do you really unlock that value and bring it, uh, bring it to your customers? So I am Prithpal Bogel. I'm part of the Apigee product team within Google Cloud. And then I'm also going to be joined with my co-speaker, Pratik, from uh, Informatica. So let's get started. Today, many, many enterprises are at some point of time in the digital journey. And it's really all about taking the awesome amount of data that they have which sometimes is locked in silos, but unlock all of them as APIs to deliver these connected experiences. That has pretty much become the hallmark of any successful digital company. As they are beginning to express more and more of the capabilities through APIs, it becomes very important uh, to take an outside-in perspective. And that's exactly what we mean by the digital value chain. When we talk to many customers, it's, it's pretty obvious they have a lot of capabilities, some of them which are also enabled as APIs. But it's not all about having n number of APIs or services. It's about how carefully you curate those APIs to deliver the right kind of experience to the end user. The app developer plays a very important role in taking those experiences and shape them up so that the end user essentially has the experience of what they need to see. That is what we call as the outside-in perspective. And in our experience, we have seen successful API programs really satisfy all the aspects of the digital value chain. Apigee happens to power successful API programs for many, many customers. And we are really thankful uh, for having an opportunity to serve them. As you may see, we have customers across all different verticals Fortune 100, 500, 1,000, SMBs, all kinds of shapes and sizes. And they have come to rely on our capabilities to be able to run their API programs successfully. Turns out, Apigee has just the right kind of API management platform. So let's spend a few minutes out here thinking about what's really required to power your API program. Of course, there's the secure and scalable runtime which you need to be able to power and manage your API traffic. But there are important set of vertical capabilities which layer on top of that. So as an example, the mediation engine gives you all the bells and whistles such as, I need to secure all my API traffic. Awesome. We have a policy for that. You drop it in, and suddenly all your API traffic is secured using OAuth. Again, you have some traffic management policies such as controlling spikes in traffic, or perhaps you want to enforce business quotas. All those set of capabilities are provided by the mediation engine. As you start to move up in the layer, it becomes very important for you as a customer to have the end-to-end -end visibility entire, entire, across your entire API program, whether that means operational metrics or keeping a track of how your API program is doing, so developer engagement metrics. Once we have APIs, are developers even building some apps and driving traffic against them. And last but not the least, this happens to be the most important part of the platform. How do you really engage with application developers? Okay. How many application developers in the audience out here? Just a quick show of hands. Okay. So what we have seen is today, I'll just do a very simple analogy. If you are building, if you have a mobile app that you're using on your phone, and it takes you more than four seconds for you to navigate from one screen to the other, chances are you're going to go and download another app from the App Store, right? APIs are at that level today. If you do not make it easy for your developers, for the application developers, to consume the APIs without any friction, and if the APIs are not clean and simple to understand, they are going to move to a different API provider, OK? So it's very important to provide a rich catalog of APIs through the developer portal with complete API documentation, so it is very, very easy for them to adopt your APIs. 
So Apigee's API management platform offers exactly that. And artificial intelligence and machine learning is actually built into the core of the platform. Many of our customers have actually used the API analytics capabilities for a period of time, and they've really gotten some good uh, success out of it, especially in keeping a track of the API program. Although a lot of those metrics have been more around trending parts of what really happened in the last hour or last week. What we are announcing today is the beta of the Apigee, the API monitoring solution. And this really brings the real-time contextual API monitoring for APIs integrated into the platform. It helps you better manage your API SLAs and gives you the ability to diagnose all your issues in a much shorter period of time. More importantly, we have seen many customers who express the need that in order for me to diagnose what's really happening with my APIs, I have to correlate many things across a few different tools, such as I want to be able to see what's happening with my logs, and I want to see what my alerts are being fired, and I really want to be able to correlate the entire sequence. AP, Apigee's API monitoring actually gives the ability to just within a few clicks have that context at your fingertips. And we don't want you to take our word for this. One of our key customers, Bazaar Voice, have been an early adopter of the Apigee's API monitoring solution. And they are using this to be able to proactively detect and fix issues, even if it happens to be on their target backends, so that they can manage the customer's SLAs better. We will be turning on this feature for a lot of our customers uh, over the next 30 days. So really, really, really proud to announce this capability. Now let's shift back to how do you really accelerate your API first strategy? And what's really involved in that? From our experience, we have seen three high-level things which take, uh, which take the most uh, pain in terms of trying to become digital. The first one is, obviously, how do I easily and securely connect to cloud services, SaaS applications, and in many cases, on-premise applications as well? The second piece that becomes really important, once you've done that, how do I easily take those assets, turn them into highly curated APIs that can deliver the right experience. And more importantly, do not forget the application developer. You want to ensure that the application developer has the right set of tools, modular capabilities, so they can reuse those assets and turn out and churn out APIs much faster. So for that, let's kind of break down the anatomy of how do you really access a cloud service. Turns out there are a set of repeatable steps that has to be done over and over again. So let's try and just walk through them very quickly. So let's say I decide I need to access some kind of a cloud service. Well, first, as an API developer, I have to figure out where do I store the credentials to that service. Could be a service account could be just a simple username, password. I need a secure mechanism to persist it. Secondly, once I have that, then I need to go talk to a token endpoint, passing in those credentials so I can actually get a token to that service. Then I have the same issue that I need to go manage the token, persist it, and also worry about the expiration and refresh cycles. But once I've done that, Finally, I can go call my cloud service. And although that's a set of things which you have to do to access a service, we feel it's very error prone. If you have one API developer who's trying to do that to access a service, and suddenly they need to scale to provide that to many different services, it just becomes extremely repetitive. It's time consuming. It's not easy to have the application, or have the API developer wire those things over and over again. And more importantly, the redundant steps tend to build up over time and causes a loss in productivity. The other thing we constantly hear is administrators are not very comfortable letting developers manage and deal with credentials. Okay? 
they want to have the right separation of concerns. They want to be able to have designated roles who can manage credentials, and more importantly, have the API developers go off and do their stuff, which is go access those APIs or services and build some nice experiences. So let's see how we can get around this. How many Apigee Edge users in the audience today? How many have actually touched the Apigee Edge platform? OK, a few of them. So as you may have come to know, Apigee is a very powerful and comprehensive full lifecycle API management platform. And it offers you two big choices. You can use a configuration-based option, which means we have 30 different out-of-the-box policies that you can use to secure, to provide traffic management, do some mediation, transformation, et cetera, right? And that's great. And using some of those policies, you can do those four steps we just spoke about, right? Token, get your uh, uh, credentials, finally access the service. Or you can use some of the out-of-the-box coding policies that we have, and we support different kinds of languages, Java, JavaScript, Node, Python, et cetera. However, it still requires you to do those four steps that we just reviewed manually. Today, we are introducing the new Apigee extensions capability uh, as beta, and we are delighted to have this capability be available to our customers over the course of the next 30 days. Now, what does extensions really bring into the mix? It brings three high-level things. It brings a modular and secure way of connecting to your cloud services, and it gives developers the ability to use simple policies, which we will show you in a demo here very quickly, to call and invoke those specific services. So as part of this announcement, we are rolling out eight different GCP extensions, extension of GCP services, a brand new extensions management user interface, so org admins can actually go and configure those extensions, and in true Apigee fashion, an extension management API. So you can use those APIs to be able to communicate with the platform if you don't want to use our user interface. So here are the eight new extensions that we are rolling out today. It's available as beta. So I'm not going to go through the list. But we'll actually see a live demo here very, very soon. In order for me to actually show you something useful, let's imagine a use case. We're going to do a live demo here. So in this case, how many of out here ever have to worry about data loss from enterprise? Anyone? Come on. Some of you folks are being shy. All right. Data security is a big issue. In this quick example, I want to show you how simple and easy it is for an Apigee API developer now using Apigee extensions to be able to interact with a data loss prevention API which is a service that Google Cloud Platform provides, OK? So in this case, let's take a quick peek at how we would go about doing that. I'm going to switch on to my demo mode here. OK, that works. Awesome. Hopefully, the demo gods are with us today, and the Wi-Fi uh, works great. So one of the first things we're going to do out here is very quickly go and look at the new extensions interface. So I'm logged into an Apigee Edge org. And I can come to this extensions page under admin and add any extension. So you can see some of the extensions that we were talking about out here. The Cloud Vision API, Data Loss Prevention, Firestore, Stack Driver, PubSub, so on and so forth. The idea is we are rolling out these extensions and we'll continue to add more down the road, but these are much more purpose-built towards API-centric use cases. Okay? So once I come out here, I can just select that particular extension, give it a name and description. And once you do that, you have the extension listed in your organization. So let me just, for the purpose of this demo, use an existing extension out here. The extension has, it can be deployed across multiple Apigee Edge environments. So in this case, I have deployed this thing for test. 
And really, the interface mechanism is super simple. In this case, you take the service account that you have from within the Google Cloud Platform project. You supply the service credential when you're deploying this specific extension. And once you save it, it will automatically persist the credentials securely and give you a checksum out here, right? So separation of concerns from a governance perspective, the org or the extension admin can come and do this, OK? And out here, you will see logs as to when that specific extension is communicating with the service in the background. Great. Now, once I've done that, that's the one-time configuration that I have to do to enable that extension. As an API developer, my job becomes extremely simple. So let's take a look at this DLP sample. In this simple API proxy, remember, I still have to go, if I'm not using extensions, go and do those four different steps we spoke about, right? But using extensions, the credential management overhead is not my issue. So I go out here as an API developer. I can add a step out here, click a simple extension callout policy, select any extension that I've configured, in this case, DLP, and it will automatically populate the right kind of action. So in this case, we have three actions defined out here, which are obviously reflective of what the Data Loss Prevention API exhibits, which is de-identify with mask, with type, or redact the image. So I just happen to use a de-identify with mask. And you can see I've already configured this out here. I'm sorry, de-identify with type. Specify the action out here. And that's it. At this point in time, let's go take this thing for a quick test. So I'm using Postman out here. And I've made some changes uh, in my API proxy so that I will compare the value of the header. And if it is unsafe, I will not invoke the data loss prevention API. Again, you can wire this thing in whichever way you want to. So in this case, here is the simple request which is going in. Let's hit send. And when I do that, you should see the data is just passing through as is. Not really ideal. So now let's go out here really quickly and change this to safe mode. And when I do that and now send it through, you can see that the data has already been masked automatically by the Data Loss Prevention API. Very simple example of how you can use the new connector, uh, the new extension mechanism to be able to uh, leverage any kind of service in a very, very modular way. OK, so let's wrap this one up real quick. So we just went through the brand new extensions capabilities. It's beta today. It will be available for customers uh, as we start to roll them out in the next 30 days. But we are going to be adding a lot more capabilities. We're going to be building more extensions to existing GCP services and to other providers. And more importantly, we will also be building and rolling out the same extension framework to our customers so you can build your own custom or private extensions and reuse that within the enterprise. Finally, evolving into a marketplace of connectors where many of our partners and customers can actually contribute their own extensions so they can be reused within the, uh, within the Apigee universe. So real quick, what are some of the key benefits of using the extensions? First class, self-service extensibility built right into the platform. You can connect to any service. And more importantly, down the road, you can build and distribute your own service extensions. OK, so great. We very quickly looked at how you can accelerate you know, accessing different kinds of services and turning them into quick APIs using extensions. But what's underneath those APIs? In many cases, turns out enterprises have gobs and gobs of data and a lot of business processes which really need to be powered as APIs. As we start to talk about this, we have heard from many customers that although the API management platform is really awesome at curating those APIs into some awesome experiences, 
for the digital experiences that they need to consume. However, we really need to be able to take the data which is sitting locked in silos, leverage the integration processes which are weaved on top of that, and really bring the entire solution stack together. Because the reality is, as we talk to customers, you have integration architects who need to work on working and building those business processes. They need to be up level into APIs so they can power mobile, digital, and other connected experiences. And that's exactly what we have done. Uh, some of you may have caught up on the recent announcement we made a couple of weeks back. So Apigee has partnered with Informatica, both collectively breeding, bringing the best of breed and leading API management solution and the best of breed iPaaS solution as per leading industry analyst together so we give our customers the ability to actually leverage these two platforms in unison, be more productive, and really accelerate their API-first strategy. With this, I would like to uh, welcome Pratik on the stage. Pratik, take it away. Thanks, Britpal. Thank you, everyone. So what I'm going to focus on is what this partnership looks like, where we are today, where we are headed. So before we get started, let me actually give you a quick overview of who we are as Informatica. Uh, most of you probably know uh, we have been in this space of enterprise uh, data management for over 25 years. And since the beginning, day one of in Informatica's foundation, what we have done is worked with data. We have managed the data, uh, we integrate the data, we curate the data, we master the data, we secure the data. That's what the Informatica platform, uh, as, uh, as Informatica, what we do. Today, Informatica actually has, and uh, this is a good slide that covers uh, overall the overview of what Informatica platform looks like. Uh, so as you can see, uh, there are six different categories that we play into. Uh, integration, integration in the cloud, integration on-prem, hybrid, uh, all of that. Uh, big data and big data management, uh, data quality, data governance, master data management, enterprise data catalog, and data security. Uh, that actually, that experience is what we, as Informatica and Epigee in this case, are trying to nurture and help the customers to unlock the enterprise data assets that you have, you have in the enterprise and bring it into uh, the digital, uh, and help through your digital transformation journey. The area that we will be focusing on is integration platform as a service. Uh, how many of you know what IPaaS stands for? Integration platform as a service is the new uh, integration platform that are mostly targeting the cloud integration and the hybrid integration. Generally, the uh, the notion there is to bring various patterns of integration into a managed environment. Informatica runs its in integration platform as a service, as a managed cloud uh, service uh, that supports uh, almost all uh, and supports the multi-cloud as well as the hybrid uh, integration patterns. Today we process over 2.5 trillion transactions a month. Uh, we have over 6,000 plus, 7,000 plus customers. Uh, we have over 100 plus uh, OEMs that actually embed our platform underneath. Uh, and one of the significant characteristics that you see in the top right there is 300% uh, growth uh, on, the, uh, on the API volume, the way customers are consuming it. And let's, let me go and walk you through as to what that platform looks like. So at the high level, it's very simple. Uh, this is what uh, the IPaaS uh, from, a high, uh, from an uh, architecture, architecture diagram perspective. First of all, it needs to support any integration pattern. Uh, integration patterns are, you know, uh, are currently, as I said, it's converging. So there is no big distinction between an AP application integration, data integration, uh, IoT, uh, big data, all of that, you need to now support that. And the goal here between what Informatica and Apigee is doing is how do you actually expose those integrations that you develop in a platform such as uh, Informatica iPaaS and expose that as an API? And, 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 what, and how you can unlock the data assets that are behind uh, running those processes and expose that uh, for your digital transformation journey. 
The second thing which is very critical is the audience is actually expanding beyond an integration architect or an API developer. Today, you want to actually bring the data in the hands of uh, various different users within your enterprise, your business users, your admins, and so on. And they should be able to do quickly uh, data integration data uh, and able to handle, with, handle the data uh, as, uh, and should be in their fingertips. The third and the key point is that you need to work with any sort of data. And data is, as you all know, could be a structured data which is locked in an enterprise uh, database or an application. Uh, it could be unstructured data on your files and uh, log data uh, sources. It could be uh, a streaming data that is coming from various IoT devices and so on. And the ability to actually work with all sort of data and expose that as an API is something that we'll be talking about. Uh, one of the other big thing is underlying platform should support a lot of, uh, should be able to handle this volume of data, and that's where our enterprise unified metadata intelligence come into play. This is an AI and ML technology that actually powers uh, the IPaaS platform. And finally, the platform itself has to be very rock solid, scalable, to actually handle the type of volume we were talking about. Uh, today, as I said, it's growing at 300% uh, on a year over year in terms of API volume, and we expect that, that trend to continue. In fact, uh, we are prepared to actually handle it over 1,000%, and, and that's what uh, we are prepared to actually handle. Uh, the key differentiator of Informatica is the breadth and the depth of connectivity. Uh, there is no single data source out there that we cannot connect to, e even mainframe. And we know that a lot of organizations today have data and uh, business processes locked in mainframe. How do you actually expose that uh, into your digital transformation journey? And, and when we talk about connectors, these are rich connectors which are very metadata rich uh, and, uh, and can handle uh, various different transformations on those, uh, on those data sets. Uh, here, a quick example of uh, data stores uh, on, on the big data side, cloud applications such as Workday, Mercato, Conquer, if you want to actually reach to those data sources and turn that into APIs, uh, middleware sources such as uh, TIPCO or uh, any, anything that you are talking on the messaging uh, infrastructure, social applications, and so on. What we have announced and what we are uh, working on uh, with uh, Epigee, uh, and this is where we are actually announcing the, uh, the integrated experience uh, to you all. Uh, first and foremost, uh, and by the way, this is in beta, first and foremost uh, is uh, the publishing capability. So everything that you have working with on an informatic environment, and I'll give you a quick demo on that, uh, you can actually expose that into uh, Epigee natively and with a point and click UI. Number two is to consume. Uh, if you are an API developer and you want to actually find out all the various uh, applications and processes out there which is powered by Informatica, how do you actually extract the value out directly from uh, your uh, Epigee Edge environment? So that's the subscriber, uh, subscription part of it, and you can actually auto-discover from within the Informatica tool sets, right from within the Epigee environment. And finally, the piece that we are working on, and we are uh, very diligently focused on that, is how do we make the these rich connectors that we have, over 200 plus native connectors, but thousands of endpoints that we can connect to, how can we actually make that available in the FEG environment directly and natively so that you can actually unlock the power of data and the applications that are sitting behind those, uh, uh, those applications and make it available into FEG. So with that, let's go and look at the first part. Uh, the publishing of, uh, uh, for publishing of Informatica integrations directly into uh, FPG. And that, uh, I'll go into a demo. So what I'm showing here is a cloud uh, user interface of uh, Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services. Uh, for this particular demo, uh, what you are seeing is an integration architect view. And we have provisioned some of the services of Informatica Cloud Services to this particular organization. Uh, this is a subset of all the services that Informatica Cloud Services offer. Uh, we have the integration hub, and we have the big data uh, services, and we have data masking services, and so on, which are not here visible, because this org is uh, powered for the integration architect who is interested in the data integration and the application integration. So I'm going into the application integration, and I'm 
I'm working on an order uh, processing application. Now, this is a typical example where I have, uh, I already have a process inside my enterprise, which actually takes in orders, and it is generating the order information, and it is taking the order through the lifecycle towards order to cash process. And it is doing the order fulfillment, it's doing the order procurement, it has to do all of those things. Now, imagine as an, uh, this enterprise now wants to go digital and makes this available to uh, your salespeople who are uh, on, the on the road. And they are spending a lot of cycles right now to actually do all this manually after they come back from, uh, from, their, from the field. And we want to make this available to them seamlessly from within their iPhone or from their uh, phone or mobile device. So what we are trying to look at this is we are taking an order processor. Let's look at the process here. The process is a complex process. It's touching a touching number of uh, different endpoints. And it is actually doing, as I said, going, uh, taking the order, order information, and generating an order, and then taking the process further into the fulfillment cycle. I want to make this available to my API developer. And remember, I'm playing the role of an uh, enterprise architect. So what it's, this is where the integration, uh, the, the one that I talked about, of publishing a service or publishing a process to the API developer is what I'm going to show. So here, as you can see, we have a natively integrated uh, APG here. I'm going to create uh, this particular, uh, and it gives me a nice wizard-driven approach to actually publish this particular process to my API developer. I'm going and selecting the order processor and selecting the APG org that I want to deploy to. It's walking through these steps. Generating, auto-generating the uh, ID for the uh, particular proce uh, process. You can al always rename it. I want all the interfaces to be exposed. I have various different security uh, setup that I can actually apply here. In this case, I'm going to just select the pass-through. I, I can offer, uh, make it available in secure mode as well as in secure mode. Uh, in this case, I'm going to make it available in both, given that we are still uh, testing this particular process. And uh, I don't want to apply, make it available directly in production. I want to make it available to the API developer in his sandbox, so I'm testing the test environment here. And that's about it. At this point, the order processing is it's generating the proxy and it's making it uh, available to the API developer to directly invoke it from within APG. There is an SSO established between uh, Informatica and APG, so I can directly go into this and uh, get into the APG interface here. And as you can see, that process, uh, that business process is already available, and the uh, endpoint. Uh, as you can see behind the scenes, and the backend system is talking to Informatica. Let's see whether this runs. So at this point, uh, I'm going to go into my uh, Postman client, and I'm going to run uh, this uh, particular Yeah, I found it. Yeah. So I sent the request over uh, to the, uh, and you can see the, the order information was generated. I go back into the APG console to see whether it ran. OK, I need to start the trace on. And then I'll invoke on one more, one more request on Postman. Yeah, it, it executed again. OK, and let's see the execution piece. Yeah, 
Uh, let's look at Informatica Cloud on the, uh, uh, on the Informatica Cloud side and see if that request came through on here. And it shows you the process flow, the execution path this particular request took. So that was a quick demo of publishing from within the Informatica iPass to Apigee. And we saw how seamless this whole integration was from all the way from, uh, from actually looking at the internal business processes and applications and making that available to an API developer from where the API developer can quickly test, uh, prototype it, and then make it available and consume it uh, for, in this particular case, uh, for the mobile application that he was building to help out his sales team. So uh, we covered this particular flow uh, of publishing from Informatica uh, to uh, the APG side. Where I'll, at this point, I'll hand it back to Prithpal, where he will go into the other side of the integration. Thanks, Pratik. <clears throat> so what you saw very briefly out here was how we have taken the time to automate the user experience for an integration architect who is tasked with building out a lot of these business processes. And within a few clicks, you can push that as an API proxy within Apigee, right? Cuts down on a lot of the error-prone redundancy uh, and other steps that are needed and automates that user experience. All of that can be done from within the Informatica user interface. So let's take a look at the second design pattern that we have also enabled. And this is the deep integration that Apigee has done with Informatica the other way around, right? So in this case, in this scenario, really think about you as an API developer as you're building your API proxy within Apigee, you have a requirement to be able to reach out to one or more Informatica business and integration processes, right? So let's take a peek at how do we really go about enabling that user experience without having to leave the Apigee user interface. In this case, we have actually built on top of our extensions framework and built a first-class extension to the Informatica integration cloud. And in this design pattern, uh, as compared to the previous one, the final request goes and ends up with the actual backend target. But in this case, you can see you may have an existing API which routes to your backend target, but you can make multiple callouts to different kind of integration processes. So let's take a peek at this. So I think this. Uh, all right, so let's start out here. So I think this, this was working with just uh, a matter of too many screens open out here. Um, the, the order process of three was what uh, Pratik went us through. Now let's take a quick peek at how we would go about doing this thing the other way around. So I'm going to switch orgs here. I'm going to gaccelerate four. And so again, you go to the admin interface here, click on extensions. And I can add an extension from here. So there is this Informatica integration cloud extension that I was talking about. Can click on this, give it a name, and then save it. For the purpose of this demo, I actually already have configured an extension. So the Acme Corp is the extension which points to that specific org within Informatica. And in the same style of the extension interface, we have the credentials which are persisted securely for you within this Informatica integration cloud extension. And then, as an API developer, it becomes very easy for me to just call out that business and integration process which is sitting within Informatica by using just a simple policy step. So here's my simple API proxy. I could come out here, click out on the extension callout policy, just in the exact same way that I connected to the data loss prevention API. I can select Acme Corp. 
And when I do that, behind the scenes, this is actually invoking the registry API that Informatica has enabled as part of the product level integration. So this is, in real time, introspecting the business integration processes which are published in the Informatica org and accessible to me using simple design time constructs. So I can search out here, select the one I want, and it's as simple as that for me to invoke that service. I've already configured an API pro uh, the extension caller policy here, and I'm trying to get lead information back from Informatica. If I hover out here real quick, within this project structure, within the demo, you have the fetch leads with fields business process. Very, very simple business process actually goes and fetches data out of Salesforce. And what I do is I take that process, call it from Apigee, do a little bit of data massaging in terms of the way I want to return it, and then I, I call that API. So if I go back out here, let's go put this thing in trace mode. Let's start a trace session. I'll jump onto this out here. I'll click on my leads API. Now you can see that this lead API URL is different from the business process that's available within Informatica. This is the actual API endpoint that you can use and share with your mobile apps, with any other kinds of interface that you're trying to make that, this, this thing with. This API also can then be published using all the Apigee tools into a developer portal with nice, clean, generated API documentation. And it can be accessed and you know, available to power many different kinds of connected experiences. So this really enables, let me run this thing a couple times here. So when I make a call to this, it's actually going over the wire, making a call to the Informatica business process, which is talking to Salesforce, getting the data back. We do a quick transformation and show the data back in this format. Right? So just imagine uh, how the integration architects would work before we had these integrations available. It was possible, certainly. However, it took a lot of manual work. In many cases, we've seen customers who have completely different integration center of excellence teams or integration architects and completely separate API developer teams, right? There's a lot of hand-holding and manual passing of information back and forth which needs to happen. Very error-prone, not as secure, and more importantly, it doesn't uh, bring out the productivity which is required to accelerate your API-first uh, strategy. So using this kind of integration patterns, the first one, again, I'll recap, which Pratik walked us through, is taken and making the life of an integration architect super easy by giving you a couple of clicks. So the, right from within the Informatica UI, you can push these business processes as secure, managed API proxies. And they can then be automated into the API lifecycle. So you can very confidently share that with mobile apps, with any other connected experience that you're trying to deliver. The second thing that we looked at was Without leaving the Apigee user interface, API developers who are interacting with these kind of very critical uh, processes can simply use the extension framework and the first class extension that we have built to the Informatica Integration Cloud and integrate with those processes, turn them into APIs very, very rapidly. And the last announcement that Pratik went us through, took us through today was that we are going to use the exact same extensions framework which we have used to enable the nine extensions that you saw today, and take the rich palette of connectors that Informatica has to a variety of different kinds of data sources, all the way from SaaS applications, big data systems, mainframes, and a bunch of different on-premise sources, and turn them into connectors which customers can use directly from within the Apigee user interface. We believe that tackles a set of use cases for API developers when they are not really interested in building a full-blown business and integration process, but simply have a need to connect to different kinds of sources, turn them into APIs very, very quickly. So recapping this, today 
we took you through a journey of how you can accelerate your API first strategy, unlock the value in the enterprise apps and data sources that you have, and turn them into secure, manageable, and monetizable APIs that will power and fuel your digital transformation initiatives and your API first strategy.